In this video, we're going to look at SP hybridization in linear molecules. So in this case, we want to start extending that kind of valence bond theory past the diatomic molecules we've been looking at and go into polyatomics. So the simplest type of polyatomic you can imagine would be some atom with hydrogens on either side of it. So this triatomic here, uh, BEH2. So you can see that's arranged in a linear fashion. So we have our hydrogens along the z-axis, which I have arbitrarily chosen to be the z-axis there. And these each come with their own electrons and orbitals in their minimal basis set that they contribute to the problem here. So beryllium, four plus nucleus, four electrons. Each hydrogen has a proton at its nucleus and one electron each. So a total of six electrons. The hydrogens give us a 1s orbital each. The beryllium gives us a 1s, a 2s, and three 2p orbitals, one along each dimension. So that's a total of seven possible orbitals that we could have to work with to kind of get our wave functions from. And we're, of course, most interested here in the bonding orbitals to see how bonding works in these particular types of molecules. Okay, so first thing we would notice, if I'm taking a look here, is that for the 2px and the 2py orbital, they're not going to overlap with the 1s orbital of each of the hydrogens. So they're not going to be able to contribute to bonding. And you'll notice that because uh, these 1s orbitals are symmetric with respect to the y-axis and with respect to the x-axis. So whatever they are on the, above the y, they're the same below the y and for the x. And the px orbital is anti-symmetric with respect to that orbital. PY is anti-symmetric as well. So any net overlap on the bottom half is going to be exactly canceled out by the top half. So we can state that more formally <clears throat> in terms of a, a, an overlap integral. So if we say 2px of the beryllium, its overlap integral with the 1s of the hydrogen is equal to the same as for the 2py because those are both going to be zero. Okay, so we know that these aren't going to contribute to bonding. So that means that our 2px and 2py orbitals, should they ever be filled by electrons, are going to be non-bonding orbitals. because our, our central atom, the, the orbitals on that central atom, do not have any orbitals on the other atoms that overlap at all. So therefore, there's nothing to overlap and nothing to form a chemical bond out here in the middle. And similarly, our 1s, elect, our 1S uh, orbital here is going to be filled with the two core electrons. And because of this 4 plus charge of the beryllium, that's going to be much, much lower in energy. Remember, the energy of the 1s orbital kind of scales with z squared, or the square of that uh, charge of the nucleus. So that's about 16 times lower in energy than the 1s orbital on, uh, on these here. So it's going to be held very tightly. It's going to be very low in energy. It's not going to overlap very well with these as well. And that's going to be where these uh, two lowest energy, or these core electrons, are going to be located. So also the 1s of beryllium. That's going to be an occupied core orbital. So it also doesn't participate in bonding because it is in the core. Okay, so what does that leave for us to form wave functions with? So the stuff that is left is going to look something like this. So if we're forming a bonding orbital, we have some psi, and that's going to be a linear combination of some of the things that we have left. So we have our non-bonding orbital our core orbital there, our non-bonding orbitals there, so we're left at 2s, 2pz, and 1s and 1s. So that will just, in the most general sense, be some linear combination there. Psi, be 2s, plus c2, psi, be 
2pz plus a third coefficient, psi h1, 1s, plus c4, psi h2, 1s. And pick your favorite, call that hydrogen 1, call the other one hydrogen 2. Uh, arbitrary here, they're symmetry equivalent as well. So just pick one and call it hydrogen 1, and that's the 1s orbitals from each of those. Okay, so our task for the wave function would be to decide what the find what the coefficients are for these. But instead of having uh, two orbitals for the beryllium, which are overlapping here to form uh, whatever coefficients they are, we can come at this with another kind of convenient construct for kind of our own qualitative analysis which gives us nice orbitals that are already pre-positioned to good overlap and good bonding, and that's going to be a hybrid orbital. So instead of just having this 2s here and the 2pz, we're going to take a linear combination of them which already pre-orients them towards uh, the, the kind of ideal bonding case with, a, with either one of these hydrogens or the other. Okay, so what are we going to do with that? So we can say psi sp, because this is going to be an equal combination between the s and the p in this case, equals, there's going to be a normalization constant, 1 over the square root of 2. It's going to be 2s, a beryllium, plus or minus 2pz of the beryllium. So there's one case where they're plus, one case where they are minus. So you can see that demonstrated down here. I've got the 2pz and the 2s. So in the case where I add them together, this positive overlaps and reinforces here. These kind of cancel out there and deplete the density there. So this is kind of the positive linear combination there as I've drawn them. You build up density on the lobe where they add together. You, so you take out density over here, how the math ends up. And then there's the anti-combination there. If I have, well, let's see, uh, one of them I, I switch the sign for. So looks like I switch the sign for the p orbital here, making this positive, making this build up over here, and deplete out from the other side. <clears throat> okay, so those are my two sp hybrid atomic orbitals. So I can call these sp orbitals, sp hybrid orbitals. And notice they are 50% s and 50% p because they are an equal linear combination of those two orbitals. And you'll also notice that the 50% also comes from <clears throat> when we square this, the 1 over the square root of 2 squared gives you the kind of the character of each of them. 1 over square root of 2 squared is 1 over 2, which is the coefficient in front of each of these. They're each 50% of their given orbital. So then when we take these hybrid orbitals and we try to overlap them with the 1s orbitals of the hydrogens to form our bonding and anti-bonding orbitals, what we, what we see here is if we take our sp orbital and arrange it such that it overlaps favorably with that hydrogen. Notice how it's already pre-oriented. We've already added density and kind of pushed the or bonding orbital over towards this direction. Then that overlaps forms a net increase in electron density over in this region over here. I'm going to go ahead and add in that phase there. Okay, so it adds in that density over there. Similarly for the other one on the other side overlaps very well with this 1s core orbital buildup of density and we've got bonding there. So these are all bonding orbitals. And on the bottom uh, the other case to get our other orbitals remember four orbitals are coming in four orbitals must go out. So we took we took two in here we got two out formed our sp hybrids from our s and our p. So taking the, those two sp hybrids and the two orbitals here, those are our two bonding orbitals that result. So what are our two anti-bonding orbitals that result? So the opposite combination of these 
if we switch the sign on the 1s orbitals, notice that you get a you get a clash there, it's going to form a node, it's going to form a depletion of density between those two, and you're going to get an antibonding orbital between the beryllium and the hydrogen. Same thing here on the other side. So this is where we can come up with our antibonding orbitals for our overlap between our 1s and our sp hybrid orbitals from the beryllium.